Hi, I'm Jerry Job, and this is a tutorial on more masking in iColorama. In the new release of iColorama, it changed the brush mask toolbar and added a couple of AI uh, options under masking. So let's take a look at the brush mask toolbar. We have the brush over at the left, followed by the eraser. The next is a slider that allows you to adjust the brush size for your brushing and your masking. Following that, we have the brushes themselves. I have a square brush chosen at the moment. Then our settings for our brush. We have both basic settings and adjustment settings. And the one we will be looking at is manual rotation under the basic settings. So if I start to tap around the screen, you'll see squares appear, those square brushes. I'm brushing, masking out the pink and masking in the blue. And you'll see that they turn. And even when I make a stroke, those brush, that brush tip turns. So if you don't want that to happen, then you can use manual rotation under the settings. If you turn that off, then the brush tip will stay upright and I can tap and it will be very definite squares. And even when I make a stroke, I can make it, if I'm careful, I can make it straight across like that. The next two buttons are limits and invert. Limit is the brush, I mean limit is the button with the small circle inside the dotted line. In order to show you that, going to get rid of the mask as it was by tapping the trash can that's a little farther out on the toolbar there. I'm doing a preset gradient and I'm going to invert it using the half circle within the circle so that I'm brushing in rather than brushing out. I change the color and I start painting. When the limits button is white that means limits are applied. So as I tap around on the pink, then it will only apply to the pink. If I tap on the blue, it will only apply to the blue, and it will even leap over the pink into that adjacent square where there's blue. If I turn the uh, limits button to blue, then it's unlimited, and I can go all around. This is show, this is the eyeball button. This is showing a red overlay where the mask is. So next I will uh, talk about, well, there's the AI and this lazy snapping buttons, and then there's a hand button that allows you to move the uh, toolbar around. So next we'll move on to the AI. I'm not going to be talking about the lazy snapping. The lazy snapping mo works a lot like the automated, the AI ones, except you'll have to do a lot more manual work to select the subject. So here's an image of me, uh, and I can see that if I wanted to cut things out, the the problem might be in that reflection of the back of my head in the mirror. So I tap on the AI button and then the Calculate button, and we have various options there. I'm going to choose Person, and it creates a mask for me. White, where, my, where I am, and black for the background. Black reveals changes, white conceals changes. So this is this mask would allow me to change the background. I'm going to use a preset gradient just to show where the mask is. And you can see that that portion sticking up above my head is, is an issue. But we can modify that. And I've zoomed in here and I've already brushed over that large portion, but there's some white around the edges that I want to get. And if I use the limit button, then I can even tap interior, like that whitish area, I can tap and get the uh, background to show through there. So I tap on my zoom button, 
zoom move button and move around and clean up the edges. But for the most part, the mask is fine as it is. When I get everything just like I want it, I'm going to export the mask so that I can use it for something else. In this case, I want to be able to build a shadow. So I'm going to export the mask. Now I'm going to use Effects Blend and replace that goldish preset gradient with an abstract that I've got. So I'll go to uh, Effects Blend and pick out my abstract. Now I turn off the brush menu, brush mask menu, so that I can be moving the background around on my screen and not be brushing and changing the mask. Then I'm going to delete the mask. Oh, first, I think I will invert the mask so that I can deal with my features, uh, my image. Uh, I'm going to try a tone pastel. I don't like this one. I choose another one, but it's for some reason it's not showing up here in this video. Once I've found a tone that I like, I apply it and then I delete the mask so that I can move on to Effect Shadow. Effect Shadow uses your mask to tell where you want a shadow to be applied. So I tap Effect Shadow and then down at the bottom I choose, uh, choose the mask that I've saved off. For some reason that's not showing up either. But you can see the black shadow around there. The only other thing I'm going to do is I think I'm going to change it to a yellow shadow to make it stand out more. And there I've done that. The next AI that we're going to look at is clothes. So I can change something about my clothing here. So I'll hit calculate and hit clothes. Once again, we can see that the black that reveals is over my clothing, but we've also got some additional black here that we're going to have to clear, clear off. Uh, so I'm going to apply that up in the upper right, and then I'm going to show do a preset gradient just to show you where the mask is. And then I'm going to start brushing out. Well, I can see now that I've got limits on, so I turn limits off and then I start uh, going around and clearing off all that uh, around my clothing. Now I can, set, instead of doing a preset gradient, I can do an adjust hue and I can move the hue slider and change the color of my shirt because it's masked in. And I can lower the uh, saturation until I'm happy. And there we've got an example of both the person AI masking and the clothing AI masking. Well, there are some other options, including sky and then matte one and two. So let's pick out a picture that has the sky in it and see how well this AI does in picking out just the sky. I've got this image with uh, a couple of houses and some trees and some uh, so we're going to go in and tap on Brush Mask, uh, tap on AI, uh, tap Calculate, and pick the Sky one. Well, here we can see that the black is over the sky. And we've got Details and uh, Result and Detail down at the bottom. And it really doesn't make much difference around those trees. Uh, we have a good hard edge around the house but not so much around the trees. Put in a preset gradient so you can see it more clearly. I'm going to do a nice bright red gradient so, so you can see. Now we can use the limiting in order to try and clean this up some, all those halos around the trees. Oh, it shouldn't have been paint. It should be erased, so I switch to erase. 
and start tapping around the edges of the trees. And because the brush size is large and the limits is on, then it goes into the trees somewhat and picks up some of that color. But it will only pick out the color that's identical to the surrounding blue. If it starts fading into the trees, uh, then that changes the color. And so you have... Uh, you know, you still have this halo around the trees. I, I work my way around here and do a, a pretty good job. I can even zoom in and go in among the trees some to try and clean up those halos. I'll just tap where I know there's just blue sky. Try not to tap any of the branches themselves. And it's getting rid of a lot of this halo. You might want to deal with the limits slider in the settings to try and pick up more of that. Well, now, instead of this um, preset gradient, the red, I'm going to blend in a, a painting, a very Monet-like painting, and try and uh, use that as my sky instead. So I've picked this out, and in order to resize that image in the background, I have to turn off the brush mask, because otherwise, if I tap the screen, I would be brushing and changing the mask. So I'll move it around here a little bit until I get it uh, to where the halos don't show as obviously. And that would be nice. You know, the sky does work there. So now we're going to move on to the matte masking under the AI. And what we'll see that does is it actually chooses what the subject is and tries to create a mask just for that subject. So I tap mat one, and once again, it's got result and detailed. And you'll see that it's not pure white or black, it's gray, got a lot of gray in trying to choose this image. And that's true whether it's result or detailed. Well, let's look at Matt 2. Well, Matt 2, I can't get it to do anything. It's just plain black. So let's switch back to Matt 1. And once again, we're going to touch up this Matt in order to uh, use it. Um, we've still got the effects blend on there. I'm going to change it to a preset gradient. I'm going to take this uh, brickish color. And uh, you can see it's partly over the house. So we're going to use the brush and we're going to brush over the house. And we're going to use limits once again to help us when we get close to the edge. Right here in the center, I can go all around the center of the house and and uh, it's no big deal. But then I'll have to zoom in to get around the edges. I want to make sure I have limits and then I can go over the roof, go over the lines there, the, the trim, and uh, just basically work my way around the house trying to clear this up. You'll you should notice that up here above the house, there's some branches just faintly shining through there. So we'll switch to erase and cover those entirely. You can see I'm covering that up because we don't want that those hint of trees to be part of our uh, mask. And you can see that by using limits and then switching to a harder-edged brush, 
we can make relatively quick work of masking around the house here. And I switch between erase, which I'm using to do the outside around the house, and the paintbrush that I use for the inside. To mask all that awful why, uh, red off. I've gone forward a little bit here. I'm working around the columns. I can use mask and it's quick work to get the inside of those columns. And the same over on the side along the edge of the columns and up in the eaves around the roof line there. As I move around the house, I'll touch it up. I know there's a portion over here on the side of the house that I'm going to want to get. Use erase to get on the outside and then use the paintbrush to get the gutter included as part of the house. At that point, I'm pretty much done with the mask. I'm going to change the background color to a bright green so I can use this in chroma. I'm going to save this off without applying it. I just save it on the green and now I can get rid of the mask and it will revert back to the original image. Now if I use effect chroma and I bring in the, that image, it's an additional house that's going to initially overlay that original, but you can move it around and you can squeeze it down so that it can be seen as farther away. Now, obviously, it's not going to match entirely. I mean, if you look closely, you can see things that uh, don't aren't really realistic. Uh, it didn't get all of the stairs and the sidewalk in front of it, but you know, you can get it in there to where it looks pretty much correctly. I'm going to do the same thing on the left side, except this one's going to be larger, and we won't see all of it. We'll just see this end of the house. So this is just an example of what you can do with masking. Um, and that the AI options will help you develop your masks more quickly than totally brushing them in. Um, so we've been over painting, erasing, We've been over brush sizes, the different brushes. We've been over the settings. We've been over limits and inverting. We've been over uh, show the overlay for the mask. Uh, we've talked about lazy snapping, and then we've been through the AI, the person, the sky, the clothing, and the two different matte options. So I hope this will help you in the future with your masking in iColorama. Until the next time, enjoy.